Real churches experience not only the real gospel, but the real Holy Spirit. In Galatians chapter 3, verses 1 and 2, Paul writes, You foolish Galatians, who bewitched you? Before your very eyes, Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed as crucified. And I'd like to learn just one thing from you. Did you receive the Spirit by observing the law? or by believing what you heard. This points us to the glorious fact that we receive the real Holy Spirit when we receive Jesus Christ. For when we believe in Christ, the Holy Spirit regenerates us, Titus 3, 5. The Holy Spirit indwells us, Romans 8, 9. The Holy Spirit anoints us, 1 John 2, 20. The Holy Spirit baptizes us into the body of Christ, 1 Corinthians 12, 13. The Holy Spirit gives us the gift of, eternal, of, his, the gift of himself, Romans 12. And the Holy Spirit seals us, Ephesians chapter 1. And all of these ministries by the Holy Spirit happen at the moment that we trust Christ, when we receive him. And these are once for all. These are valid forever. These are instantaneous and invisible. This work of the Spirit is done by the Spirit Himself. And then after we trust Christ, the Spirit leads us. Romans 8.14 teaches us truth. 1 Corinthians 2.12 The Holy Spirit empowers Christian service. 1 Corinthians 12.1 The Holy Spirit produces fruit. Galatians 5. The Holy Spirit gives us wisdom when we ask, James 1. The Holy Spirit helps us to pray, Romans 8, 16. And these ministries of the Holy Spirit in the Christian life do not happen once and for all, but these happen throughout our Christian life. They're repeated. They're temporary, but they need to continually be happening in our lives as we cooperate with the Holy Spirit by not grieving the Spirit. Ephesians 4.30, by not quenching the Spirit, 1 Thessalonians 5, by being filled with the Spirit, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. And so the great thing is that at any moment as a Christian, we can be prompted by the Holy Spirit to do something that we never would have thought of. And in fact, one of my favorite symbols of the Holy Spirit comes from the Celtic Christians, the Irish Christians of the 5th and 4th century. Do you know what they called the Holy Spirit? They called the Holy Spirit the wild goose. Because as Mark Batterson writes in his book, The Wild Goose Chase, much like a wild goose, the Holy Spirit cannot be tracked or tamed. There's an element of danger. There's an air of unpredictability. And while the name might, may sound a little sacrilegious, I don't think there's a better description of the Spirit in our life. I think the Celtic Christians were onto something. Most of us have no idea where we're going most of the time. And I know it's unsettling. But when we're following the Holy Spirit, he takes us on adventures we never would have found ourselves. Mark Batterson is a pastor in Washington, D.C. of the church where our daughter goes. It's called National Community Church. And this church was small and it was struggling. It was meeting in an elementary school. And then um, what happened was that the door opened for them to go and move their church services on Sunday morning to the Union Station train station in Washington, D.C. 
And they had a new location where they could come and the church began to grow, largely with 20 and 30 year olds that were moving to DC to work for the government. And so God was doing some really great things there in the church and it was growing and they really needed a place though for an office. And there was one place, one very expensive building that they found and they really prayed for it for years. And finally, the door opened for them to be able to purchase this building, which was formerly used for drugs and for crack. And they turned it from a crack house into a coffee house. And today, Ebenezer's Coffee House is one of the most well-known uh, coffee shops in that area of town. And all the proceeds from that coffee shop go toward missions. And now this church is starting um, one of these coffee shops, Ebenezer's Coffee Shops in Berlin, Germany. And we have friends that have moved there recently to get that done. And so... Real churches experience the real gospel. Real churches experience the real Holy Spirit. And real churches experience the real Jesus. There's confusion about who Jesus really is. But one of the most clarifying books of the Bible, if you want to get to know Jesus better, is the Gospel of John. And through reading through the Gospel of John, there are a number of phrases, seven in fact, where John, J Jesus says things like, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. And there are seven of these I am statements that Jesus makes in the Gospel of John. And this phrase, I am, goes back to Moses in the burning bush. When Moses asked God in the burning bush in Exodus chapter 2 and 3, what is your name? And God said to Moses, I am that I am. That is my name. And in the Hebrew, this is summarized in the sacred name for God, which is Yahweh. And in Latin, this is pronounced Jehovah. And throughout the Old Testament, it's usually appearing in an English translation as the Lord. And so when Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, I am the bread of life, I am the door, I am the good shepherd, what he's really doing is filling in more of the detail when God said, I am that I am. And now Jesus is claiming that he is indeed Jehovah God, that Jesus is indeed Yahweh, that Jesus is indeed God with us, and that the one true God is a trinity, one God eternally existing in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And that's the real Jesus. And unfortunately, there are groups who will say, oh yeah, we believe that Jesus is Lord. But remember that Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, there are many who will say to me, Lord, Lord, but I'll say to you, I never knew you. Depart from me, you evildoers. Because if a person is giving a different gospel or has a different spirit or doesn't really believe that Jesus is Jehovah God himself, God with us, but somehow thinks he's just a man or think, somehow thinks he's just a ghost. Or I even talked to one person in America who thought that maybe Jesus was a zombie, that he had died and come back as a zombie. No. Jesus isn't a zombie. He's not just man, although he is fully man. The amazing thing is, is that the real Jesus is indeed Yahweh with us. And in John chapter 8, verse 24, Jesus is very clear with the Jews that were around him who thought this was impossible for a man to be Yahweh in the flesh. But Jesus had to tell them in John chapter 8, verse 24, I tell you that you will die in your sins. 
For if you do not believe that I am, you will die in your sins. Because you see, there is no other sacrifice than Christ crucified that can pay the price for our sin. There is no other way to the Father. There is no other only begotten Son, but the real Jesus. TBS Seminary is a nonprofit project. Our joint effort will bring about the common purpose of making Christian education available around the world and developing good Christian servant leaders. You have a unique opportunity to partner in this effort through your prayer and or financial support of TVS Ministry. For more information, please visit tvsseminary.com. And so I want to close our session now with a story that's a true story. And I think it's a great story about how Jesus is indeed the one who died for us, but not only died for us, but he is risen from the dead. And he is actively working through his followers so that people all over the world will know the real Jesus and the real gospel and the real spirit. And you and I are the ones who are sent with, with him so that others might know. I read this story in the book called The God Who Hung on the Cross by Doyce Roser and Ellen Vaughn. And the foreword is by Chuck Colson, who's a very famous American Christian who recently died. But this is a true story. And in September 1999, a Cambodian pastor traveled to northern Cambodia to bring the good news about Jesus to a remote village that had been enslaved by the Khmer Rouge rebels. And as far as anyone knew, this man who came to this village was the first one who had ever come and explained who Jesus was. It was a Buddhist area. When the pastor arrived, he was amazed because he was welcomed by the villagers in an unusual way. And as he began to talk to them about Jesus Christ and who he was, that he was indeed true man, that he had lived a sinless life, that he had died for our sins, that he was risen from the dead, that he was ready to be their Lord and Savior, that he was returning one day. The people just all accepted it. They all wanted to become Christians. And this man was simply amazed that they were so responsive. And he said, it seems like you've almost been waiting for me to come. And they said, we have been waiting for you to come. And they told him a true story that after the Khmer Rouge 20 years before had taken over Cambodia, they had gone through the countryside. And as they moved through villages, they would often order the people out of their huts and they would kill them on the spot. Well, as the Khmer Rouge rebels came into this Cambodian village, they did something a little bit different. They ask everybody to come out of their huts and they ask them to go to the back of the village and uh, behind where the village was, there was this field. And the Khmer Rouge uh, told them that they were to begin digging. And so they dug a long pit. And as they dug, they began to cry because they knew what was going to happen. They knew that they were dr digging their own grave. And so as they were digging this pit and, and uh, getting this done with the Khmer Rouge there, the villagers began to cry out. Some of them cried out to Buddha. Some of them cried out to ancestors who were long gone. Some cried out to their mothers. But one woman remembered a story, a story her mother had told her about the God who had hung on the cross. And she thought, Surely this God who hung on the cross might have mercy on those about to die. And soon the whole village began to cry out to the God who hung on the cross. And then there was silence. And one by one they turned around. And as they turned around, they saw that the jungle was empty, that all the soldiers were gone. They had fled. And from that day forward, this village had been waiting for someone to come and tell them more about the God 
who hung on the cross. And they became followers of the real Jesus with the real Holy Spirit, understanding that the real gospel, in a word, is Jesus himself. And so real churches and real Christians, always we have to be looking to come back from being easily led a different direction to be centered on Jesus Christ. 